Today I want to talk about something that I think a lot of people experience, and that is dealing with the choke points in your life. Dealing with the choke points in your life. You know what a choke point is? <laughs> like, that's a choke point. I'll do it over this side over here so you guys can see it too. <laughs> Sounds like a Thanksgiving turkey, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. Um, now, we, we, let, just to get perspective, let's remember who we are. And just remember what we've got. According to the book of Romans 8.13, right? Uh, Abram's to be the possessor of heaven and earth. Go back to Genesis and you'll get the cross reference there. We understand too that that promise was made to Abraham and his seed. And having been in Galatians 3, we've discovered who the seed of Abraham is. The seed of Abraham is Christ. You are part and parcel of the body of Christ, of whom Jesus is the head. We are all part of the body of Christ. We, get, we come into that relationship through conversion. We receive him as Lord and Savior of our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13 says that, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Now that's not water baptized, that is baptizo. It's the word that means plunged into. And that is what happens when you get born again. You are plunged into the body of Christ. You are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. That's how you get born again. Now... Once to Abraham and to his seed were the promises made. And you have to go all the way through Galatians, and I've given you references in the past. And if you be Christ, now I am Christ, uh, and I am in Christ, I am part of the body of Christ. Uh, Acts chapter 17 and verse 28 says, In him I live and move and have my being. Correct? Okay? So every believer is in Christ. Therefore, the promises that are made to Abraham's seed, who is Christ, is mine. Romans chapter 8 says that I am a joint heir together with him of all the things that he possesses. We saw back in Colossians that he stripped Satan uh, when he was down there, when he was paying for your and my sin and guilt. And when he was there, he stripped Satan, when the Spirit of God moved on him, he was raised from the dead, and he strips Satan of everything Satan possesses. And that includes everything that Satan Stole from Adam. So everything is Jesus's. Now you and I are joint heirs with him to all those things. Now this is important. You've got to get this. That, because that to some people immediately is a choke point. That's a choke point. Because you're having a look at what you're living in. And what I'm saying is such a contrast to what you're experiencing. Your experience doesn't change the truth of the Word of God. So there's something that's got to be adjusted. There's something that you've got to realize needs to take place. And we'll talk a little bit about that this morning. So, I'm heir and joint heir with Jesus to the earth. The earth, we'll get there, is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But I want you to realize this because... If I started that position, then I have to ask, how big a slice of this deal do I get? See, what is my earth? See, it's everything, and it has to start off here. I mean, it's no good saying, oh, the whole earth. Because, quite frankly, nobody can own the whole earth, other than God. Okay? But if you, earn, if you go and own your part of the earth, and you do, 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 and own it, which means what? Everything that happens in my area of earth is my responsibility. I don't let things happen that are outside of the will of the Father. Yes? Yes? I'm responsible for that. Are we okay? Can we start there? All right. Let's have a look at this. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. 
And it doesn't mean weird. It means you are solely His. You belong to Him. All right? Now, the first one is what I want you to look at. You are a chosen generation. In our generations, going back to Genesis, the blessings of Abraham. Abraham and his seed, his offspring, were to be blessed in their generations, provided they walked in their generations according to the demands and the dictates of God in covenant relationship. Now, you cannot break the Abrahamic covenant. You can't. You can't break the covenant you've got with God. You know why? You're not a covenant head. Only a covenant head can break the covenant. You can step out of covenant and you put yourself at risk. But you didn't cut the covenant. That's what the story with Abraham back in Genesis where God puts him to sleep. So that he couldn't get involved from a human standpoint of what God was about to do. And then we've got the picture of God the Father, covenant head, and a representative for Abraham, Jesus, the Son, cutting covenant together. God who cannot lie. God who doesn't change is cutting covenant together. What an incredibly secure covenant we've got. And you can't break it. You can walk outside of it, but you can't break it because that's forever established. And while you stand in any situation, in any circumstance in life, and you declare what the covenant says is yours by right because you're in the covenant, you stand on that, it will come to pass. Thank you, Father, for the millions and millions and millions of dollars that are coming. Don't laugh. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I can smell it. I can taste it. I can taste I I I just know it. I know in my Noah that I know that I know. And all the people listening to this will say, Did it ever come to pass? When it comes to pass, I'll put out another CD and tell you, here it is. Yeah. See, oh ye of little belief, some of you just reached a choke point. So you are the chosen generation. And the interesting thing about this, and we need to know this, is that God's kingdom rules over everything and is an everlasting kingdom. The word of God says, of his kingdom, there will be no end. Also have a look at Psalm 103, verse 19, please. Are we there? The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules Over all. I don't care what China says. I don't care what the United Nations say. Of his kingdom there will be no end. And his kingdom's not getting weaker and weaker. His kingdom's getting stronger and stronger. Two years ago I told you about polarization that'll take place. It's happened. It's just about complete. Because even in the body of Christ you've got unbelievers. But you've got those who are believing. And they take up the truth of the word of God and they apply it in everyday situations. And they are getting results. Yeah? Okay. You are in the kingdom, not as a servant, not as a slave. You are in the kingdom as a son, as a joint heir with Jesus. He said so. Amen? Wherever you go, you represent the kingdom. And his kingdom will rule over anything that is trying to bring you down or entice you back into it. Anything that tries to discourage you or make you fail. It is not possible for you not to succeed. 